Andy is going to talk about the use of the speed grader and how helpful it is while you are grading student work. Now, traditionally, people have just entered points into a grade book, but I promise you the speed grader, once you get the hold of it, is really helpful for your grading. Now, you can get there in multiple access points. There's not one way to get to the speed grader. Here I'm in the grade book that's still filtered, and I can click on the three dots within an assignment and get to the speed grader. Additionally, if I didn't want to go this way, I could also go into my modules. And let's say I wanted to get into this uh, essay, Unit 6, African Resistance, DBQ. I could click on the three dots there and get to the speed grader. Um, the same thing is true if I were to go into an assignment and I saw it on my to-do list and I can click into it and I can also click on my speed grader in the upper right. So there are multiple ways to get here. It's really whatever is the easiest workflow for you. Now, once you're in the speed grader, let's kind of go back here. Again, I have my student names hidden and anonymous. You get that set up here in your options. But this is what the speed grader looks like. Now, there's a different variety of submission types for assignments, as we've talked about before. This one um, was a Google Doc, so we can kind of see that in here and what we were submitted. Now, on the right-hand side of the speed grader, we have our rubrics. This is a course that has uh, a number of outcomes or rubrics that we've kind of attached to this. And these are all my different standards. So there's five standards at this one assessment is assessing. And so we can see in here for me with all these kind of unique math that we do, you can click view rubric. And all I'm doing is as I'm looking for these things in the essay, I might be leaving feedback over here, but I am clicking how they did on these different skills as I go through it. Um, so if they missed in this case sourcing, they had a lower score, they'll give them mathematically kind of in that C range. Now, they will then, as I click all these different things of the rubric, I will hit save. It then totals that all together to give them the letter grade for this assignment. Um, for students, then they can see the feedback and be able to see which skills and outcomes they did poor on and which ones they did better on. I can leave a feedback down here as we talked about emojis. I could attach the files. I could um, give an audio recording here. So the speed grader is really helpful specifically for the math that goes into how the grades are calculated. So all you need to do though is just click on what proficiency level they are at according to the rubrics in your course. So that's really helpful. Then you don't need to be doing any of that math yourself and it just goes into the grade book. The great part about this then is you can then click next. There's a little arrow on the upper right, and then this will go to the next student. The student may have done it on paper, let's say. Um, if I continue to click through, I can get into a new assignment. For this, I can just click to make it show here and see how that they did. So this is how you can view student work in the speed grader. Now, there's a few tricks that I need to tell you about, um, and some of them are just the shortcut keys. When I'm in here, and some of these, if it's just like text entry, that'll just appear where right now these Google Docs are. Once I'm done looking at it, I can hit the letter J and it will go to next student. So now we're on student five. I hit J again, we're on student six. If you're like, well, what was that fancy shortcut? You can see up here, there's a few things. One, I can hide the grades, but there's the keyboard shortcuts. And so J goes to the next student, K is the previous student, C gets me to the comment box, G goes to the grade box, R means open the rubric that I have. So if I was in a student, let's just kind of click here, and I clicked R, it opens the rubric, and I can move this to make it bigger or smaller depending on what I'm grading. So those are some really helpful shortcuts as we're going in here, and you can get pretty speedy at the speed grader as you're going through this. Um, a few other things that are just up here, if they're helpful for you, this button will get you back to the grade book. Um, make sure that you hit save whenever you are done clicking your rubric scores. Again, you can add comments here, but that's how you use the speed grader to help you go through all these things. We highly recommend uh, using the speed grader for math purposes, but hopefully if you have any questions, you can reach out. Um, there are other ways in here. You can also sort some of the student work. And so we have the options right now to sort the students just alphabetically. I could also have this randomize the students. That's kind of newer in here or randomize the students by submission status. So this is going to, as we look here, 
um, save the setting. It's going to re kind of organize the numbers here. But what's really great about some of these settings is if you wanted to just say, hey, I want to have this by the date they submitted it. So who I got it first is going to have be towards the top and vice versa, or just by submission status. So we're going to get all the ones that are needing grading toward the top. And so you don't need to kind of go through all those that didn't submit it. So this is another helpful part in there. Um, again, if you want to uncheck the box so you know whose students you're grading, also helpful. So that is the speed grader. And I promise you, it is very helpful while grading in our courses.